You ready? Never. You never know. Welcome to our first installment of Dr. Mike. Uh, today we'll be fielding questions from our fans strictly based around relationships, navigating through hard times, and all that fun jazz. Let me correct you right there, John. Um, I think we're going with Dr. Steve for the name of this one. What did I say? Mike. Dr. Steve. Yeah, we're going to go with Dr. Steve. But um, <laughs> yeah, just to preface it, if you think back to what I said about the podcast originally, it was just like, felt like it was the best way to answer fans, to build with fans, to help them, to give on a, on a scalable, you know, platform instead of you know responding one message at a time and i've noticed i mean we're having a little party this weekend and i just kind of had the i was going through my dms the night before and it's just like it's pretty wild how most of the messages i'm getting are like relationship advice stuff Mm -hmm. and i think it's through the podcast that they felt comfortable to even ask me and it just feels like a good a great segment for us that we can at least try see uh if we can not help more people just navigating it i don't think there's many young men at our age like having these kind of conversations it's kind of not manly you mm-hmm. know like that horseshit toxic like masculinity where it's just like oh you don't don't talk about that like you know figure it out yourself like, well let's uh, a quick shout out for the females we did have a lot of them reach out as well so this will be yeah yeah both of men and women reaching out this i mean evening. men like us we're we're the ones doing like this feels like something like female you yeah. know what a podcast females would do where mm-hmm. i think it's kind of cool for us to break that barrier and just have that dialogue openly i agree well we have a lot of people that uh reached out so i think we should just dive right in um I would just assume people want to remain, remain anonymous unless uh, they want to go ahead and tell us their name, but yeah, we can just treat it as such. All yeah. right, let's. Uh, <laughs> we haven't done this in a while. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta talk to the. We gotta touch base with the with the home base. You know what I mean? The home team. I love just calling fans. The best. Hey, how are you? Hello. Hey, how are you? This is John Kilmer. You're on the air with Wine K Podcast and Doctor Steve. Hey. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys? Pretty good. I hope we're not interrupting anything over there. No, you're not. You're good. Awesome. Well, I got Dr. Steve here. If you want to just shout your question out, we'd love to uh, answer it for you. Hey, how are you? Yeah. Hi. So my first question, um, what do you guys do to shift your mindset to focus on healing and focus on yourself rather than focusing on the past and your ex? Mm -hmm. And then do you think that guys heal differently or get up or break up differently than girls? Great question. Um, so I would say there's a few, there's a few layers to that answer. Um, for the first part, it's, it's not much different from like what we've already kind of talked about a lot. And I think this is actually where I found out how powerful like self care and, and um, taking care of your, your mental and, and um, making sure your perspective and focuses on the right things. Um, that's how I learned. Cause I like went through a breakup and I wasn't, before that I wasn't really ever thinking about, you know, really I wasn't really thinking about like what my focus was on. And, you know, I wasn't really shifting towards like gratitude whenever I've, I didn't know these things. I, I really wasn't even privy to them until I felt like I really needed it. And that was when I needed it. And I think that's when most people need it is when they, you know, it's easy to be in a good mood and have the right perspective when things go in your way. But then, you know, when something like breakup and love and and all those factors are involved and it gets gets very hard to navigate your own thoughts. And I think it's really important to do things like, you know, the gratitude journals where you talk, you, you, you put your focus when you start your day on the things that you do have, not the things you don't have. You know, that was a huge thing for me. Meditation was a huge thing for me. Um, but really, it's, it's like uh, my biggest thing, as I say, this saying, like, say thanks every day. And, yeah. and it's, a lot, it's a lot easier said than done. But I promise you, if you do, like they say, habits in the mind are created after 20 days of repetition, I believe, 21 or maybe 30 days. I think it's 21, though. And um, just if you can, it takes like 10 minutes. And it, and it really is something that sets your day at least in the right direction and can slowly start to chip away at your perspective. 
Um, mm-hmm. And then the second part of that question, can you remind me what the second, Kim, you guys the second part is if uh, if guys heal differently than women. I mean, personally, it's just a lot of Pornhub pretty much every day. Um, I gotta be, I gotta be uh, knocking back a few Bud Lattes with the boys. I just gotta put girls out of my, just just out of my blinders completely. Yeah, and like to answer your question, that's that's a typical Kilmer answer. Um, but to answer your question, basically drink beer and jerk off. That's pretty much that's how I get over anything. That's how guys heal. Um, no, I mean, guys and girls and guys obviously are just genetically different. We're wired a bit different and. But I, my answer would be no. Like, I think a lot of I think a lot about relationships. Um, that's there's a similarity and an undertone of like the same feeling on both sides, and it's it's really hard for people. I think nowadays, or really in general, more than ever nowadays, just because there's so much there's just so much going on. You can be on your phone all day and be in everyone's business and have so many distractions. But really, the biggest thing is like. It's, it's understanding that you, you have to go inward. It's not like losing something externally. Most people go external to get a, to, to get a fix. Like they'll look outside themselves and, oh, let me find somebody else. Let me jump to the next person. Let me, you know, that's, that's a common thing. And it, to me, honestly, it, that's, a, that's the wrong direction. You have to go inward and you have to like that's where you realize that it really wasn't necessarily it's not necessarily about that person it's about you being scared of being alone you know what i mean and like that's how i felt and and that's where that loneliness comes in and you just think about it if you have anything in your life person dog anything that's been in your life a job you know playing baseball like anything you did that was a big part of your life and then it's taken away from you you miss it because we're trying, we, we're trying, to, we're constantly looking for security and like reasons, uh, you know, all, all the things that, that keep us engaged and things that are important in our life. And when you take something that's an integral part of like almost every day, you miss it, you know? And, and you know, really it's, it's kind of like an illusion, the security of it all, you know? Um, personally, like that's where I felt, that's where I felt I, I was lacking and I needed to I, I went inward, you know what I mean? But it, it's, again, it's easier said than done. And like, I don't have all the answers, but I think it's a great dialogue to have. It's just, it's about once you're comfortable with yourself, like I tweeted something a long time ago. It was somebody else's quote. It just really, really impacted me. It's just like, when you're ready to be alone, that's when you know you're like, that's a sign of emotional maturity. You know what I mean? You, you don't need somebody else to fill that void. You can, you can sustain happiness by yourself. And that's when you'll find real love, uh, truly. I, I think if you're out constantly searching for it, which most people are, they're kind of blocking their own flow. Like you're forcing things versus approaching every day, no matter what, somebody comes in your life or they don't, you're okay. You're happy, you're happy on your own. You can be grateful for your life and what you have without some you know, Prince Charming coming in to fill the void, you know what I mean? And it's an interesting, right. it's an interesting thing, it's hard. But for me, it took it took a little time, and then it clicked for me, and it, I really was able to move on with my life and like be happy again, and realize that it was really about me. I didn't know myself, you know. Mm-hmm. So all those all those things. That was a long winded answer, but Steve, relax. Steve has something to say. He said, <laughs> um, "Say hi, Mrs. Steve." <laughs> but he, uh, you know, that that was a long winded answer. But that's really like that's really what worked for me. I hope that yeah. helped. Did, did we help you whatsoever? <laughs> yeah, really helpful. I just wanted to ask a follow up if you have. Yeah. I don't want to take up. No, no, it's all good. Ask recommendations or YouTube recommendations for meditation. Yeah, so I think an amazing, I think an amazing um, way to start is the is some of the apps, the Headspace app, um, the Calm app. There's 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 a bunch. Um, what I will say is, personally, I think that's a great starting point to get you in a groove. But really what meditation is about is sitting with yourself. And that's technically not with yourself if you're being guided by, by another voice, you know? And like, I think, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's really, like, you're not alone. So many people message me, hey, how do I get started in meditation? And it's, it's kind of ironic because it's like literally the easiest thing to get started with. It's just sitting there with yourself. And uh, one, one thing, let me, ex- I'll explain something that I actually went, 
I was lucky enough to like live in Los Angeles and there was an amazing teacher. I went and actually went on a meditation retreat and learned from somebody who, who teaches a certain form of meditation. But really the common theme is mantra or breath based. So if you don't know what to do, right? Like you, you have a mantra, it could be like, is that something you just re repeat over and over again? Yeah, like the one I did, Transcendental hey, Meditation. Hey, how are ya? Hey, how are ya? Hey, how are ya would work. Hey, how are ya? <laughs> hey, how are ya would definitely work. But for me, they gave me a certain mantra. But I like affirmations. So you could be like, you know, I'm attracting all the right people. Uh, you know, anything. I'm, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my, my friends. Any of that. And you, you, you know you kind of continuously point your thoughts towards that and your your thoughts will your thoughts will come and go and they'll the, it's 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 my number one piece of advice is and this is the first piece of advice he gave me is just like stop judging your meditation so a lot of people like will do it for 10 times and they'll be like I suck at this like nothing's happening um I, I keep thinking about everything else and I'm not really achieving meditation and that his point was that like if you went and shot if you've never played basketball and then they put you on the three point line how many shots are you going to hit out of your first 10 not a lot you know like you you might not hit any of them and his point was just like it takes practice to 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 achieve like a meditative state and it really changed my outlook on it cuz i used to feel the same way i used to feel like i didn't know what i was doing and um i think most people feel that way so I don't know if I answered it yet, but really I would, I would pick an affirmation, a mantra, or just focus on your breath. And then one other thing, one other thing I'll leave you with is, is understanding, Kilmer kind of just posted something today, I believe we were talking about this, but just understanding you're not your thoughts. That's like a great, great acknowledgement once you, Steve, cut it out. <laughs> once, you, once you acknowledge and have that realization that like when you have thoughts or even your emotions, when you feel like shit, and <laughs> taking that off when you feel like shit and you you know like you're not you're identifying with those feelings you're like oh i'm depressed i'm anxious those those are those are things that come and go they're not you you know what i mean you're actually like the person who's who's viewing those thoughts that's what meditation is i feel like i get above myself i get above my brain i get above the cloud the cloudy thoughts and I just kind of view the thoughts as they pass instead of judging them or identifying with them. You know, I might have a fucked up thought and think something negative instead of like being like, man, I'm fucked up or I'm depressed. I just kind of view it as like a passing cloud, you know, a cloud in the sky. And you just, and you let them, you let them come and you let them go. And uh, as you like chip away at it, you'll get better and better. And I've had some amazing breakthroughs and experiences just sitting in my room alone. You know, so that, that's that's really all I can say. It takes a little bit of practice and, and, and a lot of patience and just and taking in stride step by step. Day by day. By day by day. Yeah. By day by day. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Fire. I love Chicago. Right on. Yeah. When we uh, when we come out to the show next, you got to come out. I think we'll it will be a lot of 2022. We'll be on the road. So. I hope I to see you. Well, I'm planning on it. I've been to all your Chicago shows so far. So I love that. I love that. Well, I hope I was helpful. You are you are you are our first you took our virginity on this our Dr. Steve segment. You're the first one we called. Oh, that's so exciting. Awesome. I'm excited to hear it when it comes out. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank I you so much for you. joining us on Dr. Steve. <laughs> Have a nice Bye. night. Steve, why do you need so much attention? Very nice. All right, let's get a dude in here. What do you think? Yeah. Get some more dudes in here. I had to take Mr. Steve's collar off because he's being annoying as shit. But we still love you, Mr. Steve. You're still the best friend of the whole world. He really... Want to come up here, Mr. Steve? <laughs> get up here, Mr. Steve. <laughs> That's nice. He loves a good podcast. Now it feels like a show. <laughs> <laughs> we needed you up here, Steve. You're right. <laughs> he's like, why am I up there? <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Policy Genius. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. Why compare? You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius today. 
You could save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. And eligible applicants can get covered in as little as a week, thanks to an award winning policy option that swaps the standard medical exam requirements for a simple phone call. Let's get real for a second. We're getting older. And speaking as someone who's now in their 30s and has been ignoring important things like life insurance, Policy Genius has made it so much easier for me to be an adult and to grow up and do the right thing. So go to Policy Genius today because we have a tremendous offer for you. Head to policygenius.com slash YNK to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Today's episode is brought to you by Everlane. As we navigate through this life and go on this journey, nothing really defines us more than the threads that lay upon our sexy bodies. Uh, Everlane sent me some fantastic clothing. Um, I got a shirt, I got a pair of denim jeans, and I got a pair of kind of upscale pants that are both casual but also great for the workplace. And as I'm wearing these clothes, I couldn't help think to myself, Holy shit. Not only do I look good, but I feel good. Let me tell you a little bit about Everlane. Um, They are a a timeless design in the finest sustainable materials, so you can wear them for years to come. Uh, Fun little fact, for those beach days or pool parties, check out Everlane's sustainable swimwear collection made from 13,768 pounds of recycled plastic. And I know what you're thinking, John. Recycled plastic, that doesn't sound very comfortable, but you know what? Surprisingly, pretty fucking comfortable. So we have a fantastic offer for you today. If you go to everlane.com slash YNK and sign up for 10% off your first order plus free shipping. I'm going to say that again. Go to everlane.com slash YNK and sign up for 10% off your first order plus free shipping and get easy returns within 30 days of your ship date. That's 10% off your first order when you go to everlane.com slash YNK and sign up. Don't forget to tell them Steve sent you. Today's episode is brought to you by ShipStation. So you started your own online store. Maybe you're on Etsy and you're selling bidets made of pine cones. Ooh, that doesn't sound very comfortable. Maybe you're making paper mache dildos. Whatever you're doing, you have to take in consideration that you need to be spending more time growing your business and spend less time worrying about shipping. Well, you're in luck because ShipStation has come to the rescue. No matter what you're selling on Amazon, Etsy, your own website, ShipStation funnels all of your orders into one simple interface that you can manage from anywhere, even your cell phone. You'll even get access to amazing discounts with major carriers, including UPS, FedEx, and USPS. Easily compare carriers and choose the best solution every time because with ShipStation, small businesses can now access the same rates usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies without the contracts or commitments. We have a very special offer for you today. If you go to uh, ShipStation.com and use our special offer YNK, you get 60-day free trial. That's two months for free, no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com and click the little microphone at the top of the page and type in YNK and you'll get two free months. That's ShipStation.com, promo code YNK. Let's make ship happen. And hey, don't forget to tell them Steve sent you. Hi, this is John Kilmer. You're on Dr. Steve. <laughs> How's it going, man? How's it going, everybody? What's <laughs> up, brother? How are you? I'm uh, I'm not too bad, you know. I'm kind of cheesing. I didn't think this would happen. Hey, you never know, Steve. <laughs> well, believe it, because you're on the air. Do you have a question? Uh, I do actually. This is actually kind of a deep question, since we're on the. Uh, yeah, that's what topic. that's what we're here for. Let's get deep. All right. So uh, I recently just went through a breakup with my ex of three years, and it's been kind of like an emotional mm-hmm. roller coaster. Over. Yeah, and I've just been thinking. Uh, Mike, specifically, was there any situation that kind of held you back from accepting that, like, a previous relationship mm-hmm. may have been forever? I, I missed that last part. A previous relationship what? May have been finished forever. Yeah. Um, I would say 
it's a huge, it's a really a huge breakthrough when you realize that like there are certain things, right? There, there's certain things in, in life that like just come in phases, right? And there's, there's, I've had this conversation, I believe it was with Johnny about like soulmates and, and times coming and going with people who, it's, that's probably one of the hardest parts about like saying goodbye to somebody who is in your life at a very deep level is just that level of connection you all shared and the memories and the way the brain works and all of that combined and the feelings of somebody being in your life and then you, you take something out of your life that was in your life so often, so much, you're, there's a hole there, you know? So I was just on with the last caller we talked about, I was just like, could be a family pet, could be a, a job, could be a sport you grew up playing that, that you loved. and one day that day come where you couldn't play it anymore. And it's very hard to fill that void. Um, for me, man, I, I realized, you know, at the end of the day, like, there's only one thing you could actually do to make, make things better, right? There's, there's, there's really only one answer and, and it's, it's inside. It's, it's, in, it's internal, it's, it's you, right? So yes, you know, maybe maybe you were perfect in your role in that relationship and it just didn't end up being a perfect fit, right? Or in my in my case, you know, I think there's validity to that, but I think there's validity to me being I was a bit immature. I was I was a bit uh ego driven in my reactions and my actions. Um even just like, you know, not extreme, but just like if something was said that I didn't like, I had to prove why I was right, you know? Um, something that the partner did that you can't accept. Um, I had a lot of ego in that as well. Like, how could you do this to me type thing, you know? And, and all my answers went, all my answers came from going inward. Um, and, and, and really what I learned through that was like, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna reinvest in myself. I'm gonna get to a point where I'm happy and I'm growing every day. And when I get, and then on the other side of that, usually if that person's meant to be in your life, they'll come back. They'll feel, they'll feel the grace and the integrity on your end. You're not being negative towards them. You're not doing shit to get their attention and be spiteful. Um, you're living your own life. You're being, you're, you're literally going out, you know, every day trying to better yourself. And, and not to say you need to be perfect and I've made plenty of mistakes since then, but I really feel like I grew a ton after the breakup. And in turn, usually they come back around. And ironically, when they come back around, you might be at a whole other place where you don't even want to engage anymore. So I take breakups, like I've only had one, and you know, it's pretty rare at my age, you know, I'm in my 30s and I've only had one real relationship. So I went through it on a public scale and like, I didn't really, I realized I didn't really know who the hell I was. I, I didn't really know who I was without that person. I, I was a, I was kind of a boy. How old are you? How old are you I'm now? I'm 22. You're 22. You're so young. Like there's, <laughs> there's just like, dude, in the grand scheme of things, man, like you, you have so much, you have so much growth ahead of you with or without a partner. Also, Mike, if I may, um, I think there's a common misconception, especially among young people, that relationships have to last forever in, in order to be successful. And um, I think with that, with that state of mind, you're just setting yourself up for failure every time, especially if you're young. And, and um, you know, if you're in a three-year relationship, four-year, five-year, you're not, you're not going to be the same person you are on day one as you are on day 1,000. And that goes same for the uh, the other person that you're in the relationship with. Yeah. Uh, every day you're a new version of yourself, whether you're bettering yourself, getting worse in some areas, better in some areas. And it's it's kind of a an, an unfair um, thought to think that it will last forever. And if it doesn't, then it's a failure. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's yep. It that it's just a it's just a big misconception with young people. And I think once um, you know, I think once you get over that hump. And I know it's I know it's kind of uh, sad to think that like, you know, it, it may it probably won't last forever. Uh, it's 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 a sad thought, but uh, if you I think if you think about it in, in that way and you kind of enjoy the times in the moment when you when you, you know, when you are with that person, rather than thinking about when you're you know. Yeah, and and we talk about I, I'm 
I actually got super fascinated and interested with the brain and, and how it works and memories and, and the body uh, through the spiritual kind of growth that I went into. I got really interested in that and studied it a lot. And the fact of the matter is, bro, is like the body chemistry is something you're combating right now. You, you know, like the way your mind works and the way you remember things. And again, missing, take anything out of your life that you do every day. Take it out of your life, you'll miss it dearly for a little while. And, and I think it's really, when I say go inward in the beginning, I'm going to say that a lot in this segment, I, I could already tell, but really that's where the answers lie because you realize a lot of things. You realize a lot of things about yourself. You know, you realize a lot of things about why you think the way you think and why you believe the way, you know, what the things you believe even. Like, I'll leave you with this. At the end of the day, I'm a completely different person than I was when I started that relationship. I'm actually a completely different person than I was a year ago. Really, genuinely, I totally feel that way. So I'll leave you with that, man. Like, there's a perspective shift that can happen where it's just like, hey, I have one life on this earth. I actually got connected with somebody. I had a great connection with them. We grew a lot. I experienced a lot. I'm better for it, you know? And you stop putting so much pressure on that person Stop putting pressure on yourself and just like try to move on, try to try to grow every day personally, internally. Like it's such a win when you when when you look up after fucking three months of doing some work on yourself and not, you know, trying to reverse your thoughts and focus in on the positive. You 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 look up and you're in a better place than you ever been. And there will be so many more people that flow into your life when your vibe is right. And it's really about, when I say go inward, that's what I mean. You get your vibe right, everything will flow to you. Girls, money, anything you want in your life. Like, that's really how I feel. And my life has actually been a testament to it. That's why I talk about it so openly. is because I know what it did for me when I got my vibe right. And I stopped trying to think about it, man. Like, you can't control somebody else's emotions. You can't control how she evolves. That'd be like me being pissed if I needed it to be sunny tomorrow and it was rainy. Like, that's out of my control, you know what I mean? So you just, like, wake up, you accept the reality of things, and you just go inward. What can you control? You can control what you're doing. You can work on your, you know, your internal dialogue. You can work on how you're spending your time. And I'll tell you what, with, if you handle the relationship from here on out, the breakup, if you handle it with grace, you send her a message, hey, you know, I appreciate and respect you. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm so thankful for the time we had. I hope... I hope one day we can reconnect. And if not, I wish you the best. You know, and I know I'm gonna be better off for, for knowing you. And I'm happy we got to know each other. She'll never, that will go so far for her. You know what I mean? That will, that will say so much. And if it's meant to come back around, it will. And, and also, man, you're 22. Just go out there and get some ass. <laughs> Hey, just elephant uh, in the room, twenty two. You just you should be tearing through that shit right now. Yeah, just fuck two of everything. Serious, Get out there. Do do whatever. Yeah, yeah, I can feel that. Adding on what y'all say though, really, like I feel like there's a common notion, at least with like how a lot of people have grown up in the past like 30, 40 years, that you have to like find love young, and you have to find it young or you don't have to find it or you don't find it at all, you know? But I yeah. feel like nowadays people are starting to realize that like everybody's different. Like you're going to find love like in your thirties and forties and even your fifties and sixties, maybe like you never know. That's, a, just... that's a, that's, that's like really bad programming that, that I think is being exposed. And I think more and more societal constructs, just like about how life should be, will be broken down over time. And, you know, with each day that passes, but like, I really genuinely believe that's like a really bad societal thing where like, you get that pressure from your family or you get the pressure from your friends. Like, oh, you're this age and you don't have a girlfriend. Like, dude, I'm single and I fucking love it. You know what I mean? I, I really do. Cause I'm, I'm totally okay. No one, I don't depend on anything outside of myself to be okay. And it's really a, really a great feeling. And I want that for everybody, you know? But Gary Vee talks about this a lot on the business side when kids are trying to figure out their, you know, their careers or their lives or their passion. Like, dude, you have, like, six years from now, you'll look up, you'll be in a room full of people you didn't know existed. You'll be doing something you didn't know you could do. And you'll probably be in love with somebody you don't even know exists right now, you know? And you have to have, like, blind faith in that. You have to, you have to understand that, like, 
you can't try to force, you can't try to guide life at all. Like, I talk about the don't try shit. I have a tattoo on my leg. I just try to, I literally try to envision like I'm going, life is taking you down a stream. And I could either go down the stream and see where it takes me and look around and enjoy it. And obviously try to make the best of every, every branch in the road. If I feel like I see something down from going downstream and I see something down that way, I'm going to try to go down that way. But what I won't try to do is fight upstream because I'll end up getting hurt. I'll end up getting tired and I'll end up not, I'll end up like fighting, fighting the actual flow of life. So just go with the flow, bro. Enjoy it. Like you don't know what's going to happen. We really don't know. Like COVID could have taught us that very quickly that like anything could happen. You could lose, we could lose our freedom. You could lose your life. You could lose your health. You could anything, you know? So it's just like, it's about, it's about putting a focus back on yourself and how you're viewing life. And I guarantee you all the things that you want will flow to you once you get your vibe right. I really appreciate that, guys. Yeah. Uh, I've been really uh, looking forward to this call because I feel like y'all are like two people that I've really wanted to like get an insight on and pick your brain about the whole situation. Yeah, I'm glad we could. Did, do you feel like we helped? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always, I always appreciate an outside like perspective on things. I always try and like get not like other people's opinions, but just to get different. Yeah. Like, to be let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. What do you? Uh, how long ago did you break up? Just recently? Uh, yeah, it was about a month ago. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's super fresh. Like, I'm coming from a vantage point of being three, four, three. I don't even know. Four years removed. Three years removed from my relationship. Um, and if you asked me a month in, I'd be like, "What do I do?" <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, I'm it, in a glass case of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really like. I, it's you know, just have a uh, compassion for yourself. Have compassion for her. Um, the last thing you, you should do is, is spew any negativity. Like, really dive into this shit. If you really want to get this, like, we talk about so much shit in this podcast that it's pretty much all up this alley. Like, it's all self-help stuff. It's all self-care. And in that, in turn, you'll be able to navigate all types of relationships better once you, you, you realize it's, all, it's a one-player game and it's all about your viewpoint it's all about how you're digesting things and it's all about how you're reacting to what happens in life i think we talked about this once i was with a girl she brought up this thing about responsibility and in life like if you break down the word it's a response ability and like what's your ability to respond to what happens because life is just a bunch of shit that happens and most of it's out of our control the people who are happy and successful they're dedicated to responding to things the right way they're not they don't do shit. Most people I look around, and I used to be one of these people, I'd respond super irrationally, super emotionally. Someone says something to me on the street, pissed me off. I got pissed right away. Wanted to argue with them, fight them. Mm -hmm. And what is that? That's, that's like weakness. You know what I mean? That's, that's, uh, rel that's relinquishing all of my power, and it's actually giving the people power over me because they can say something. They could, they could say something to ruin my whole fucking vibe, you know? And this is all about taking back your own power. Yeah, yeah, I, I, definitely, I, definitely, uh, I definitely feel that. I'm really on the, uh, your song still works. Yeah. I'm really to that whole vibe right now. That's the and wave, man. Just, just, live it, just even like listening to the lyrics is, or watching, like looking at the, re at the lyrics and everything as I'm listening to it, I'm just like thinking to myself, I'm like, I can, like I still have love in my heart for like other things, so it's not like I can't ever like. That's exactly love. that's exactly what that song's about, bro. And uh, I love that you that you recognize that, but that's really that's the message. Just like, you know, uh, this this is like a it's like a you can it's a crack. It's not broken. You know what I mean? You got to it's dented right now. It's, it can be taken to the shop and fixed. You know what I mean? It's it's and that's that's really the the message. Is just like. If you you got to take it to the shop, you know, work on the car, get it fixed, you know, and then get back out on the road and drive around, look around. That's it. You know, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. Like, keep the love in your heart. It will attract love, bro. It really will. If, if you got hate in your heart and you're, and you're bitter and you're upset, guess what? You're, you're going you're gonna to get more of that, bro. You're going to get more negative shit happening. You start being like, woe is me. Why is everything going against me, you know? 
And it's okay if you feel that way for a day, an hour, a week. Just it's about realizing and putting your awareness on that and realizing like this this isn't how I'm gonna fix it, you know? Yeah, even if like in life you don't 100% like feel happy with some of the decisions you've made, you still have to accept that regardless of. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's it it goes back to that. We we'll talk about like when I'm saying like big love, you know, I got big love for you. I got big love. I'm saying that to myself too, like. It's about self-compassion, you know what I mean? Dude, no one, no, no one gets it right 100 out of 100 times. No one. There's nobody on earth who gets it right all the time. So when you have these, un, unreal, like, these you know, unrealistic expectations of, of yourself, you're kind of digging yourself a hole already, you know what I mean? You're starting in a hole where you just have to, like, have, you have, to have that awareness, that understanding, just like, man... I've definitely fucked up here and there. I mean, that was a big part of my freedom. Like I realized, it actually gave me a huge peace of mind when I, when I stopped saying, oh, I'm the victim. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, you know, that's what everyone feels like after a relationship. They feel like they were victimized in one way or another. And really, I, like, I actually realized, oh, I was doing a lot of shit wrong. You know, I was doing a lot of shit wrong and maybe uh, she wasn't far off on, on this or that. And it was mutual. We, we both had a lot of things to, to work on, you know? And and that I got a lot of freedom from that. I really did. Yeah, I feel like uh how uh, how hard is it now obviously living in the like not you're not really a person to like live in the limelight but yet being famous yeah and being verified like artist that still kind of happens. How tough is that personally on a relationship in general very Isn't hard it? yeah it's very very hard very hard i mean it, it's it's uh when you think about hollywood right think about all you know the that you know, people <clears throat> if you're not in hollywood or in, in the limelight or a public figure you know you see all these hollywood people and they're all fucked up and their relationships implode and you know a lot of people find jo like you know a lot of people look at that and be like oh they're all messed up you know and it, it it's it, there's a common theme because it's very fucking hard, you know. It's it's uh, it takes a level of understanding and trust and self love, um, where you can you can really like kind of be okay with like think about relationships. A lot of the time, I wanted to say this and I kind of forgot. Wayne Dyer said something along the lines where I just struck gold with me in my heart. I was just like, man, it's just like. You don't own your partner. That's not, we're, we're kind of like, we kind of feel like that, especially as men, but I feel like it's almost even now across genders, just like, oh, that's my girlfriend. That's my boyfriend. Like, that, oh, that's, that's not how you fucking act if I'm your girlfriend. Like, there's a little, there's this entitlement towards it, and it's not really the right notion. You know what I mean? It really isn't. It's Matthew, actually, Matthew McConaughey talks about it too in his book, Green Lights, where, um, it's the difference of being right and wrong versus understanding. And I think people have this, you know, they're wired a certain way to think if something's right or if something's wrong and you judge people based on that versus understanding what they did. Yeah. And I think passing that, like getting rid of that judgment and just taking the, the effort to understand why they do something, whether it upsets you or not. I think that that's, that's the difference. Yeah. Especially. And to your point, just like talking about what, you know, dealing with it on a public figure scale is just like, a lot of the things that happen in relationships are jealousy based. They're insecurity based. Like, oh, you're talking to her? What is he doing? You know, what's he doing? Why is he going out and doing this and that? And, and vice versa, you know? And, and there, there's, it's, it's all fear based. You know what I mean? You're scared of losing. You're scared of being cheated on. You're scared of being, you know, f feeling like a fool or, or look stupid in front of your friends. And really, it's like, it's again, why I will always say it's it's back it's back to the man in the mirror because once you can once you can get over those hurdles yourself and you're coming from a place of love versus fear, um, you can navigate a lot of these things a lot better. And and I I didn't really know that until after I was out of the relationship and I'd been working on myself a lot. I realized that I was very fear based in a lot of my reactions. I didn't want to be made a fool. You know, there's there's a lot of ego and pride in that, and I think. I've I've let go a lot of that a lot of that stuff, and I haven't been in a relationship since. 
but it's only because I have clarity in what I want, you know, and I'll know when I know. But one thing I've stopped doing or I really, you know, it's, it took a little while, but I don't, I don't yearn for anyone or anything. I just trust that something's going to flow to me, you know, the right person will flow to me and I trust that. And I'm back to being on a good vibe. And I, you know, personally speaking, like, I feel like I've had a lot of great options and great women come into my life. I just kind of have clarity on, on what I want and what I need. And it's not to say I haven't had great connections, but I, I'm just not, there's no codependence. I'm not, I'm not really looking to depend on anyone else for, for me feeling comfortable anymore. I feel comfortable in my own skin, you know? And, and you can, everyone can achieve, achieve that with, with, you know, some patience and some hard work on yourself. And that's a tune we can all dance to. We're going to uh, get to a couple more callers, but thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, brother. Where are you from? I'm, uh, I'm from Gainesville, Florida, actually. Dope. Dope. Well, I hope we are helpful, man. This is a great talk. All right, man. All right, man. I really appreciate you guys calling. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Keep, 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 keep on fighting the good fight, sir. Have fun with it. All right. Y'all keep vibing. All right. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dr. Steve. <laughs> You're, <laughs> you're a clown. Uh, I'm gonna have to come up with a Dr. Steve theme song. We can make a jingle right now. <laughs> Call up Ernest; he'll fire out a jingle immediately. Um, all right, let's let's get a couple more callers before we get out of here. That was great, great dialogue. I thought. I thought that was a very good dialogue. Let's uh, let's let's get another girl in here. All right. That's nice, Steve. Hi, this is John Kilmer. You're on Dr. Steve. Uh, hi. How are, how are you this evening? I'm pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. I, I hope we're not calling you too late. No, you're fine. You're fine. Where were you up to? Watching a little Sex in the City? <laughs> no, I was just driving around and I just got home, actually. Nice. Just cruising? A little night drive? Yeah. Well, all right. We got we got Dr. Steve sitting right next to me. You got a question? Yeah, so do I, do I need to give background or just like the question right you, right there? Give whatever you want. All of it. Give us give us a, all of it. Oh man. Okay. Is there like a time limit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep it concise, but you know, don't leave out any okay. juicy details. <laughs> okay. So um, basically, the situation that I am in is I have known like this person for a really long time, and it wasn't until like college that we were finally like, all right, like let's try to figure this thing out. And so for two years now, we've kind of been like trying to figure out if we should be together it's just like things haven't always like lined up certain things happen in our lives so we're just like trying to be patient well um he eventually or not even eventually he just got into a relationship like surprisingly yeah. i had to find out about it myself and like he wasn't the one that told me that's horseshit and so yeah and so when i asked him about it he was just like oh it's not that serious like it's actually something that i didn't mean to get into like don't worry about it. Like, let me figure things out. And so I was like, well, you don't accidentally just get into a relationship. So like, there has to be something else going on. And so basically he said like the reason why he's in this relationship is just because like who the girl is and like what he could do for her. And so he plays football and this girl, her family, uh, owns one of the teams in the league. And so it's like, yeah, like once you graduate, basically like, I could use who I am to get you on the team type thing. And he's like all for it. And so, <laughs> Unreal. so bad. And so, um, so basically he was just like, yeah, like that's why I'm with her. But like, I still want you, I still want to be with you, but just like, give me some time. Like everyone knows, like my friends know, your friends know that like you and I are supposed to be together. Like it's always been us. And so basically he told me that like, to hold out for two years Ugh. and like once the two years is over like he'll come back to me and like it's gonna be like what we've always wanted mm -hmm. and so my questions are like okay if it's like is there such thing like do you believe in like right person wrong time or is it like if it's the right person there's never a wrong time for it yeah and then like the other question is like because obviously it's like pretty selfish for him to say like, oh, just wait two years. Mm -hmm. But like if someone was to be like, hey, like, yeah, you go do you, I'm going to do me. But like in two years, even if you're happy with this other person, like you're coming back to me because that's just how it is. Yeah. Well, before Dr. Steve dives in, uh, just to play <laughs> devil's advocate, 
you can't actually accidentally fall in love because that's the name of a song in uh, one of the Shrek movies, I believe, by the Counting Crows. Uh, and they wouldn't make a song about it if it wasn't true. So just throwing that out there. Mike, I'll let you dive in. Yeah. Um, hey, how are you? Papa Steve. Um, so, yeah, I mean, pretty outlandish background story. But the notion uh, I'm pretty familiar with, and I think it's fairly common, like, you know, young people navigating feelings and for the first time and, you know, or just like, you know, premature in their lives and they're not, men especially do not have their shit together, especially in college. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard for them to understand what to do and to know. Um, I think women are a lot more emotionally advanced um, than, than men are, especially around that age. And it is selfish um, of him, but at the same time, you know, there's probably validity to him, you know, not telling you. He didn't probably didn't want you to know. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I couldn't give you the answer of how valid what he's saying is. But I can say, like, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of truth to the idea of like, hey, like you live your life, I'll live mine, right? How long you said you guys had a few years where you're kind of trying to figure it out and it just didn't pan out? Yeah, it was uh, two years because it was just like him and I were in like very different situations, like long distance, all of that, and then COVID happened. Yeah. So yeah, it was just different. Yeah, I mean, there's there's factors like there; th those are real factors, like external factors that are a bit um, not in the way of you know what could be, but it's just the reality of things. So, I mean, my advice to you would be: it sounds like you have a pretty good understanding of where he's at, and and you know, at the end of the day, like it goes back to a lot of what we say on the podcast. If you know, if you if you follow along on some of those episodes and just the things that I talk about. It's having a, it's kind of letting go. Like it's letting go of trying to control things that you can't, right? So, you know, there's a, there's definitely a, there's definitely a real truth to, you know, right now not being, it's not necessarily working for y'all in, in an effortless way. It's kind of, kind of the opposite it seems. And it's, there's a real connection, but you know, making it actually work logistically has been hard, you know? So I would listen to that, listen to the universe, you know, listen mm -hmm. to your heart on it. And guess what? If two years go by and you haven't found somebody um, that makes you feel like he does and he comes back to you like you said he did, then it can't be like, it can't be you returning to him with a grudge or like I told you so, or him coming like that. It's, it's almost like, hey, let's live our lives to the best of our ability individually. Um, and at the end of the day, if it comes back together, then we know it was meant to be. But mm. also I would, I would argue that right now it's pointing, you're getting resistance from the universe in a way, you know, like things aren't necessarily panning out for you guys the way you might've hoped, you know, but it's a great quote. Like we make plans and God laughs, you know, so mm -hmm. don't, don't try to plan anything. Like don't, you don't necessarily need to go out. I mean, I was just on the line with somebody else before this and I just, I'm a huge believer in like, I don't really agree with a lot of society and how like you're constantly kind of like searching and look, it feels like everyone's constantly searching and looking for the right fit versus working on yourself, trying to lead your life the best you possibly can and trusting that somebody will walk into your life at the right time. And you know, your feelings for him, it doesn't take away from those. and. It's, it's not to say that y'all don't have a great vibe. It's just mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's about, you know, you can't lead your life for anybody else. You have to lead it for yourself, you know? And take it from a couple old dogs like us who've been around the block a few times. Uh, I mean, there there's people that are just meant to be in your life forever or for a long period of time, whether you don't see them for two years at a time. Or you, yeah. I mean, there, there's people that are coming back around in my life after not even speaking to them for multiple years. Um, and if it's, you know, if it's meant to be and you guys are meant to talk to each other again, then it'll happen. You know, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Do you have, uh, what's your feelings on it? Are you like, are you upset? You're just upset that you, the way it's worked out. Are you mad at him? Or? Yeah. Like, I think like the first, like at first when everything happened, it was more of just like, okay, but like, do you need her? You know? Cause it's like, if you were really that good, you wouldn't need her. <laughs> to put you there in that situation you know so like it was just like a lot of confusion and 
then it was always just like, okay, but like, why not me? Like you clearly gave her a chance quicker than what you ever gave me a chance. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like a lot of hate towards him and just like yeah. trying to figure out where he was coming from and just, yeah. If you feel that way in your heart, it's probably right though, you know? A lot of times, and it's not to say that he doesn't have the right feelings for you. It's just he, he's not navigating them properly. And and he's kind of, most young guys are like pretty selfish. They have a big ego. They don't really even realize it. You know, I was one of those people. And uh, did you call him out on his bullshit? Oh, 100%. Good. Good for you. Yeah. And, and you know. That's the first step is just being uh, completely candid and uh, transparent with how you feel. A lot of people keep it inside. So that's already a great first step. Yeah, and then uh, from there, I mean, you, you say your piece, and then I would, I would, you know, totally disconnect and start rebuilding, you know. There, there, I know that feeling, you know, that feeling of, yeah. um, I, I, led, I led, you know, for a period of time after my breakup, I was kind of uh, just like waiting around for it to correct itself and come back around. And I very, very quickly realized that was not the right way of going about it. And... I was actually just like attracting a negative vibe to myself because I was kind of like always, I wasn't really present. I was like waiting for the future to correct itself, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's not the right way to, le to, to go about being alive, you know? So. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm stuck in that right now. Yeah, and that's, that's normal. I mean, it's, it's uh, another common theme of, of what we've been saying is just like having compassion for yourself and your feelings and stuff. And, um, it's all valid, you know. Um, the next step to to real freedom is actually is realizing um, that he deserves compassion too. He doesn't he doesn't know what the hell he's doing, and he's trying to figure it out. Um, between you know, in this situation, I would say a lot of that sounds kind of ridiculous, like what he said, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but maybe there is I don't know. Maybe there's validity to that. I don't know, but. Regardless, like he's following his instinct on it and whether it's wrong or right for you, you know, over time I realized it wasn't, it's, it's a one player game, you know, I, I kind of, uh, I kind of realized that and like set her free as well. I was just like, you know, I, there's a lot of things that I may have done wrong too. And, you know, um, you, you send them off with, with like grace and, and usually they come right back around if they're meant to, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's really what it takes is like, Trusting that, trusting in life, and that's where most people block themselves. They don't. They're not trusting in life. They're not trusting in themselves. You know, they they feel like they need somebody else to make everything okay. And uh, trust me, if you're, everyone's here for a reason, and the people in your life are in your reason, in your life for a reason. The things that happen in your life are there for a reason. And once you believe that, it makes navigating this shit so much easier. Hard mm -hmm. th hard things have come up in my life since then, and I've fucking walk I, I had a lyric i was like i forget what song it was but i and then nowadays i walk what i said nowadays I, I walk over things i used to trip on mm, yeah and, and uh i just that that's something that that really resonated that's how i feel completely like you can get to a point internally where hard hardships come and you're able to acknowledge that hey this is happening for a reason you know and mm. and uh it makes it a little easier to get through those times Right on. Dang, I just got goosebumps. All these hairs are staring up, standing up in my, my arm. <laughs> I hope that was helpful. Did that help? It, it was. It was really helpful. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah, I yeah, mean, I appreciate that. Work, on, um, work on that, uh, on your vibe and your vibe only. What are the things that yeah. make you happy? What do you want to do? Write that down. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> You're a dumbass. <laughs> but yeah, no, quite, quite literally, write it, write it down. You know, like write, write down the things you're happy for. When you wake up, I, I really, I'm, a, I'm about to come out with my own journal. It's like a gratitude journal. It's okay. Called, and it's called Say Thanks. And it's just, we've been working on it for a while. And it will kind of give everyone a little guidance on how to do this. But I, I really, uh, I, I give a lot of credit to journaling and meditation for me having a lot of the realizations I've had about myself and about life, you know? So. Yeah, yeah um, I'll definitely get yeah, that. Yeah, hell yeah. And, and um, you know. My biggest piece of advice to leave you with is just have fun with it. Have fun with life, like the ups and the downs. It's like a roller coaster ride, you know? You're not like judging the twists and turns. It's all part of the ride, you know? And just go for the ride and look around and try to have a smile on your face and 
great people will come to you. How old are you? I'm 22. Yeah, I mean, you're so young. Yeah. You're so young. There's, so, wow. there's just so many people out in the world and there's so many, there's so many twists and turns that are coming in your life and you're not going to need that person unless you're supposed to, you know? Yeah. Uh, and just trust in that and have fun with it. Well, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thank you. Also, off record real quick. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you don't know who I am because, like, cameras and all that. Like, we're just on the phone. Mm -hmm. but it's, I, it's, oh, so, yeah, uh, of, of yeah, course yeah. I know. Yeah. So, you're from Colorado, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it's so funny. That it's just like, oh, yeah, Colorado. But, yeah. I, I love that. I love that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, very nice. I know her. I know her. Her dad. Her dad and her brother were with her. Uh, your dad's a legend too. Yeah. I, remember, I remember him coming up to me and buying me drinks somewhere. <laughs> yeah, one of the bars. I know. I, it's just so crazy because like I'm so grown now, and like I'm actually moving out to LA at the end of this month. Wow. What are you doing? So, yeah. What are you doing in LA? Uh, it's for work, digital marketing. Great. Amazing. But yeah. Yeah, it's so, it's so weird. Like, when I first met you, you were like a little kid. I was twelve. <laughs> <laughs> so literally 10 years later <laughs> yeah you know i'm calling you for relationship advice <laughs> this is the this is the proper evolution of, for us <laughs> well, i love that that's incredible i love that well yeah but i was just like he needs to know <laughs> yeah no 100 percent. i know exactly who you are i know exactly what you look like give your best to my dad and your brother as well i will yeah i'm sure if they knew i was calling you they'd Say hi. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> good luck in Los Angeles. Thank you. All righty. And thank you for joining us on this little journey called life on Dr. Oh, Steve. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> have a good night. Have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Right. That's so funny. I remember her. She's so young. <laughs> she was just like a little... Um, she played some sport, either soccer or softball, I believe. And she was out there before when our bus first got to the venue in Colorado. I remember her vividly, her and her dad and her brother. That's so crazy. Wow. Um, do you want to do one more? Yeah. How long are we in? Uh, like 55 minutes. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Your call. And we can, we can do this segment again, you know? Yeah, I say, we, I say we shut it down there. I think an hour of relationship talk is probably where we <laughs> cap it off. Pretty heavy stuff. Well, there's actually, uh, before we end, there's, an, there's actually a fun little phrase for uh, girls that were once in your life and then come back around again. At a later date, you what know what it's, it? you know what it's called? What? It's called Poontang Boomerang. <laughs> I might need to be a T-shirt. Yeah, it's actually a song by one of my favorite bands, Steel Panther, who will be performing in Tempe this month, and I will be going with <laughs> or without any of you guys. With or with, <laughs> with mascara on as well, <laughs> or eyeliner. Or whatever. When I go to an '80s hair metal show, I put on a little eye makeup, just to just to you know. See, you wouldn't be doing that if you lived my life, because I've my entire life have been made fun of. <laughs> Guys are like, yeah, what kind of eyeliner you wear, man? Hey, I'm I'm secretly I'm secretly jealous of your eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm looking in the mirror, I'm like I'm, I'm like blinking, I'm like, fuck, I wish I just had some fucking lashes. <laughs> well, you get to you get to live that. The amount of fucking compliments you get. Oh my god, your eyes are so pretty. Oh yeah. my god, you have such pretty eyes. They kinda even out. The guys gave me a lot of shit growing up, so it's kind of a leveled leveled the playing field. And then it's oh John, what color are your eyes? The color of human shit. <laughs> human excrement. It is what it is. This is uh this has been nice. I feel like there's uh there's there's probably a lot of legs to us having some uh some Dr. Steve episodes going forward. I loved it. Yeah, definitely uh hit up the uh hit up the comments if you're digging it and uh maybe we can answer your question in the future. Yeah. I mean, that could be serious, that could be fun, that could be whatever, but it could be I, this would probably open up to more just like life questions. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of already do that anyway on the premium stuff. But uh, yeah, you know, anything, any way we can help on a broader level, the, all the conversations we had tonight, I know there's hundreds, hundreds of people literally in my DMs with very similar questions, very, very similar experiences. And uh, I think this will help. So thanks to the people that called. And again, it's anonymous. So like, you know, you can just kind of talk freely and openly and about things that usually are kind of th kept private. So we love it. We love it. Thank you for joining us on our first episode of Dr. Steve. We'll see you next time.